Hello, members of St. Matthew Lutheran Church. A little a few days ago, uh, it was asked of me if I would put together something uh, for our congregation um, along the lines of, could you give us kind of a state of the school address? Uh, where are things at? Because if, if you don't have kids in the school right now, uh, you probably haven't heard much. Uh, normally I get in front of the congregation every Sunday morning and, and make announcements and, and update everyone on, on how the school is going and some of the things that are happening at the school. Of course, uh, we haven't been able to do that with, with not having services. Um, there's just not that opportunity to, to let you know how things are going and, and things are, are very different right now. So uh, when I was asked to do this, I thought, yeah, that, that makes sense. Let's, let's do that. Let's inform everyone of where, where things are at uh, with the school. Well, as, as you know, things have been turned completely upside down everywhere you know, uh, all over the place, not just at school and at church, but uh, our, our entire world seems to be a little upside down right now. And uh, that's very true in, in education. Um, back uh, a few weeks ago, just the week before spring break, the Minister of Education uh, canceled all classes in the province. Now, schools are, are not closed per se. The school isn't shut down, uh, but the classes uh, are cancelled. And what does that mean? And, and it's my hope in this uh, short video to give you some information and, and let you know kind of what, what that looks like and, and how we're addressing this. One of the things the minister said when, when she gave us uh, our directive, us and every other school in the province, uh, the first item on that mandate was that students will continue to learn. And, and we were glad to hear that because that was an initial question. Uh, uh, will, will students still be expected to learn? Will teachers still be expected to teach? And, and the short answer is yes. Absolutely. Uh, there, there's no reason why students can't continue to learn and teachers can't continue to teach. Um, so we, we were happy about that. Uh, it's just a matter of how. When, when you don't have the students in the classroom, how, how do you go about doing that? Well, we knew this whole system would be awkward. There was no question. And uh, uh, particularly the first week, last week, um, once, once spring break came to an end, and uh, we, we were back at it, albeit under different circumstances. We knew that this would be a very awkward week and there would be a lot of adjusting on the fly, um, kind of like building the airplane in mid-flight, you know, um, because uh, nobody started the year off with this in mind. We, we had no idea back in September that this would be on the horizon. Had we known, we, we would have done some things differently, no doubt about that. But um, uh, this decision happened very quickly. Um, it was made on a, a Sunday afternoon, and Monday morning we we came here and, and huddled and said, "Okay, how will we we address this? That we no longer have students in our school uh, for this first week of, of full, you know, online classes. Uh, we've been very much focusing on getting the structure right." Uh, structure over content. Uh, if, if, if you were building uh, a new house, you don't start filling it with furniture while it's still being built, do you? You try to get the structure all sound and, and, then, and then you fill it with content. Um, and this first week, we've been trying to focus on that, getting, getting our structure, uh, our systems in place about how we're going to teach and uh, and uh, worrying a little bit less about the actual content. But now that we're in our second week, now we're really starting to focus on, you know, filling the house, uh, building the, the, the content in our programs. The big thing is making sure, you know, everyone's doing okay. And, and of course, uh, the distance makes that tough, doesn't it? Um, a teacher will pick up on so many different clues when they have a student in their class. If a student's a little quieter, 
or if they're not smiling as much. Uh, uh, those, those little clues, we're, we're always checking for that and see, seeing how they're doing, you know. Um, it's much harder when the students aren't here in class, uh, so we have to go to greater efforts uh, to make sure that, that our students and, and our staff are, are okay, and, and there's many reasons not to be okay in this current culture. Even if you don't have this virus, um, the, 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 the pressure, the, the, the mental anguish that, that people can go through uh, from isolation is, is something that we have to try to understand and address as best we can. And, and we'll continue to do that. We're really focusing on staying connected. And, and this is one of the strengths of our school. We, we've always been known for having good communication between home and school and school and home. Uh, the communication flowing back and forth. We have parents who are very connected to our, our school. They put their kids here for a reason. And, and uh, you know, they, they have a vested interest in our school. That's always been part of our school, but now we're, we're challenged. We're, we're challenged with distance in terms of staying connected. Um, so how, how are we going to address that is, is the big question. How do we still uh, keep what's important to our school alive? And, and uh, how do we continue to connect with one another in these times? Well, technology certainly makes a difference there. I don't know what we would have done. 10 years ago uh, to try and, and do what we're doing. I don't know what we would have done even a year ago um, because we made a major change this year. Um, this year we, we put a greater emphasis on uh, using technology as a platform for learning. All of our students in grades four to nine were required to come to school with the Chromebook this year. Now, for those of you that are, are unfamiliar with what a Chromebook is, think of it just as a pared down laptop, uh, a laptop especially made with uh, education in mind. So it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. There's there's no disk drive. Uh, there, there's no whirly gigs on there. It's just it's just a good solid work machine. Um, all students in grades four to nine were required to have one. And for the younger students in, in kindergarten to grade three, uh, we, made, we made an effort to make better use of programs uh, that could be used on our iPads. So there was this shift in terms of making technology uh, part of our supplies and, and something that would be used every day. And boy, has that paid dividends now that the students are at home. Uh, we, we knew that all students would be equipped uh, with the tools for learning. And uh, not, not all schools are, are in that boat. We also spent a lot of time at the beginning of the year focusing on what we call digital citizenship. Just like in the, in the real world, as, as a citizen of, of Stony Plain or Spruce Grove, Alberta, uh, Canada, as citizens, we have rights and we have responsibilities. Same thing online. Online, we have rights and responsibilities. Um, how you behave online affects others. And uh, so we spent a lot of time uh, looking at this, uh, looking at legal aspects of being online, uh, ethical aspects. Um, and and uh, we, each week for the first eight weeks, uh, we looked at, at particular topics of digital citizenship. Very glad we did that now because uh, it, it's paying off uh, dividends now that the kids are much more online than they were. Well, how are we connecting to the students? We'll, we'll look at this from students, from a parent point of view, and a staff point of view. What, what are we doing to help maintain that connection with the students of our school? One of the things, uh, the teachers are all required to have some sort of online office hours where they're using a tool like Google Meet or Zoom uh, to, uh, to personally connect with their students. So they, they post these hours and uh, the students know that uh, during that time, their teacher will be available at a computer where they can, they can chat live with the teacher, see one another, um, you know, show them their work if, if they have questions about something, or uh, it, it might be a particular question on the assignment, or it might be just the format of the assignment itself. But an opportunity for students who, who are struggling uh, to just connect with their teacher. And, and, you know, there's, there's a, a mental health aspect to that, too, where they can just 
they know that ah here's here's this person i can i can depend on and, and ask questions and connect with uh, a lot of our students when when we started up this last week a lot of them just kind of breathed a sigh of relief when they were able to touch base with their teacher for the first time so that's one of the first things that that we're doing for our students making ourselves available live online we're also recording our lessons um, i don't know if you can see them very clearly but uh, through that the, the window in the door is Mr. Glubish. Uh, he is currently recording a, a lesson for his class, and we know that because of his very advanced signage uh, using a styrofoam plate on the door. And uh, you'll see this as you walk down the hallways. Uh, you'll see teachers recording either at their desk or, or turning their computer towards the whiteboard or, or the smartboard, um, and uh, all kinds of recording going on. Um, here, here you have two teachers who are recording uh, from home. Uh, Mrs. Starveld, who's, who's teaching uh, phonics to the kids, and they can watch that video and, and say the words along with her. And uh, Mrs. Hamilton, uh, this is a program called Flipgrid that allows you to record shorter videos and then allows the students to respond with videos. And again, this was important because the kids were able to see one another's videos and, and feel encouraged and have a sense of community, even as they are, are separated. Um, but it can also be used as, as a, an assessment tool. You could uh, ask the kids, okay, read uh, chapter four of our novel, and I, I'd like you to summarize it just quickly for me in a video form. You know, so, uh, you know, assessment doesn't always have to be written down. Often it is, it's written, it's typed out. Um, but now we can also use video uh, for assessment. Aha, ahoy matey. Uh, here we have uh, Mrs. Barron. Uh, this was uh, from a, a phonics unit where she was teaching the AR sound, the R sound. And of course, pirates are, are very good at teaching the R sound. So uh, the teachers are, are not only continuing to teach from home, from home and to students who are at home, uh, but continuing to engage the students and, and keep them interested in their learning. And uh, I, I have to tell you, I am so proud of our staff, how, how they have stepped up and uh, in, in a matter of hours figured out, okay, this is how we're going to do things and these are the changes we have to make and this is how, uh, this is what's expected of us. And uh, uh, we have an incredible teaching staff who just uh, right on the fly just was able to make these adjustments and uh, sure it was a struggle and they've put in a lot of long, hard hours to make this happen. Um, I, th I think there's a public perception out there that because the students aren't in the classes, uh, the teachers are kind of sitting around bored with their feet up all day. Not true. Uh, in fact, just the opposite. Uh, it, it's, it takes more effort and more work uh, to do this type of online teaching because it's just, it's so much easier when the students are right in front of you um, as opposed to, you know, scattered throughout and, and getting getting their information to you at different times and having to chase them down for information. Uh, some of our students, we're a little concerned about them because they've kind of gone dark on us. We haven't heard from them at all, despite our reaching out to them. So we're trying to track them down and make sure that, you know, they're okay and uh, that they're still uh, in a situation where they're able to learn. And that's not usually part of our job, but it has become part of our job, uh, caring for our, our little lambs and making sure that, that they're okay and doing what we can for them. Along that lines, um, devotions and chapel service. Our, our school doesn't just teach reading, writing, arithmetic. Um, what makes our school special is we, we also nourish kids spiritually in their faith we we bring them god's word we bring them the forgiveness of god in christ and uh, we've made sure that we were able to do that so every morning normally our students would gather in in devotions that's the first thing we do as part of our day now that we're not here at school we wanted to make sure that continued. So I've been recording devotions every morning, continued from where we left off when we were here in the book of Matthew. And, and we've been uh, enjoying morning devotions uh, each day. Uh, it's a little different, but at least it's there for them. The kids can go onto YouTube and, and hear the, the devotions being read. Um, 
maybe sing a song on there and and have a time of prayer. So that happens every day. Uh, the one day we don't have class devotions, uh, on Wednesdays, we usually go over to the church for a chapel service. Once again, we, we wanted to uh, ensure the kids had that, that same... Um, uh, th- same kind of repetition uh, going on that uh, that they were used to. The, the scheduling is important, and and uh, they they needed to maintain that. So uh, why not have a chapel service? Now it's not quite the same when you don't have two hundred kids uh, in the church, uh, but at least we could give them the same responses and readings, and and uh, uh, old and New Testament canticles to sing. Um, so there's comfort in that. There's comfort in, in, in maintaining those routines that you're used to uh, because everything else has been turned upside down. So devotions and chapel service have been part of maintaining those routines and uh, spiritually feeding the children of our, of, of our school. What about parents? Uh, how are we uh, connecting with, with parents? Because that's important too. We can't leave them out. Well, at the beginning of the year, I started creating a series of YouTube videos called Up Close and Personal. And, and you can kind of tell by uh, this opening page uh, the, the feeling for these videos. It's meant to be almost conversational, as though um, I were sitting with a parent at a coffee table and talking about the events of the, the week or, or the school itself. Um, so, so these uh, we try to get at least one once a week uh, online on YouTube, and it's just an opportunity to talk about the school and, and some of the events and the things that are going on. And and you are always willing uh, to listen to these. You don't have to be a parent to listen to these. Uh, you can go to our our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube.com user principal wrestler. Um, You'll, you'll find it, and, and this video itself that I'm recording right now will be posted on that same YouTube channel. So if you'd like to subscribe to that channel, you can, you can keep up to date with things that are going on, just like the parents and some of the students of, of the school are. What about staff? Uh, how, how are we connecting to the staff, and, and how are we making sure the staff stay connected to one another? Well, normally every morning at uh, 8 a.m., we, we gather around uh, our boardroom table in the staff room, uh, not with this much equipment, but uh, we, would, we would gather for daily devotions, staff devotions, and I, I would lead those and uh, go through, in this case, the book of Matthew. Um, also, we would have staff meetings regularly, uh, usually every Friday after school is done, uh, we would have a staff meeting. Of course, we can't do that now. Uh, because of you know isolation, social distancing, um, this this type of situation is is not good. So we've been doing what a lot of you have been doing as well. Uh, we've been meeting through uh, video conferencing. Uh, the platform we use is Google Meet uh, because it's it's part of our our G Suite, our, our Google set of of uh, software that we use. Um, some of you may use Zoom. It's very very similar in nature. And uh, this picture, I took this picture the other day as we were having our staff devotions. So you can see there's a few teachers that are, are a few staff members that are at the school. A lot of them are, are at their homes. And uh, we, we gather every morning just like we did in the past. Instead of 8, we do it at 8.30 now because it's a little more civilized time. Uh, we gather at 8.30. Uh, we, we have a reading from scripture, uh, maybe a song. And, uh, and some time of prayer. And following that, we have a, a short staff meeting where we talk about, you know, any concerns anyone has, any, any uh, tech problems they're having, that sort of thing. Um, each, each group of teachers will also meet in their division. Division one, kindergarten to grade three, they'll meet every once in a while. Division two, grades four to six, they'll meet every once in a while. And division three, that's the junior highs. They'll, they'll meet as well. And they'll confer and support one another and, and help one another. Again, an incredible staff and how they've risen to the occasion. I, I couldn't be more proud of, of this group of people. They've been absolutely wonderful. Uh, it's been very challenging, uh, but uh, man, do, do, they, uh, do they rise to the occasion uh, when, when put to the test like this? Um, as I mentioned, divisional meetings, uh, staff devotions, uh, we have those going on regular just so we can connect uh, to one another. Um, I also 
I believe strongly that I should be using the same tools that the teachers are so that I can understand some of the, the difficulties they're having. So how I get information to the teachers is through a Google Classroom. Um, I'm, I'm the teacher of that Google Classroom and, and the staff, they, they are my students in essence. And um, uh, that's where I will bring them new material or uh, make them aware of new resources that are out there, um, post the links for the devotionals, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, I'm also using that same same tool that they will be using with the students and, and thereby I can understand some of their joys and, and struggles with the technology. Uh, we're also making sure that they're equipped and, and know what kind of tools are out there. And uh, these are some of the tools we're making use of here. Um, I'll just highlight a few of them. Uh, Nearpod is a tool we've been using all year. It's, it's a tool for engaging the students. Um, it's, it's kind of like PowerPoint in a way, but it's more engaging than PowerPoint. So the, the students uh, uh, can do activities right in the midst of the presentation. Uh, the teacher can do things like matching, match the picture to the word, or uh, uh, fill in the blanks uh, type thing with, with tiles. Um, you can embed video in there. You can, you can do little mini quizzes in there. You can poll the students. Um, all kinds of stuff. There's some gamification in there as well. Uh, but the idea is, is to more actively engage the students in the presentation so they're not just sitting there watching a PowerPoint presentation. Of course, we use YouTube for information presentation as well. Um, there's so many different ways that, that that can be used. And the nice thing is YouTube works with some of these other um, uh, tools as well. Insert Learning is a way of taking a, a, a web page and making it your own. So it kind of makes a copy of someone else's web page, uh, say the Edmonton Journal or, or the Government of Canada. It takes one of their web pages and you can uh, insert things like questions in there and have the students uh, read and answer questions right within the web page. Really interesting tool. In terms of quizzes and formative assessment, uh, we've been using Google Forms for a while. That's kind of like an online quiz. Um, it also works for surveys. You've probably done some Google Forms surveys. Um, we tend to use it a little more for, for quizzes and, and just for assessment. Edpuzzle is a great little tool that makes use of YouTube. Um, but what it does is uh, you play a YouTube video and you can insert questions for the students to answer throughout the video. So you can have them watch for a minute and a half and then ask them a question about what they just heard. And once they've answered that question, then the video will continue on. So it's a way of kind of keeping them engaged uh, so they don't fall asleep you know, during videos. Flipgrid is a neat little tool. I, I showed you that earlier with Mrs. Hamilton. Uh, it's a tool where teachers can use video to ask students questions and then students can respond using video. Um, normally writing things out is, is uh, the way we go, but uh, this is a bit of a change of pace. It's also very good for kids who struggle uh, with, with writing and, uh, and have great ideas, but they don't always show uh, when the students are writing. And then we have our online conferencing, creating tools, Zoom and Google Meet. Uh, those are our tools for video conferencing. Screencast-O-Matic is a, a tool for recording video, and I'm, I'm using that tool right now. So as, as I record this, uh, this presentation, that's the tool I'm using. And you can also use picture in picture so that you can see the person's face as well. Lots of great tools that we're making sure the teachers know about and that they, uh, they are aware of. You may have heard in the news uh, that there were some cuts to education, so I'd like to address that just a little bit. Um, uh, the the uh, Alberta Education decided that they would cut uh, the grants, the, the, the basic learning grant that each school receives per student, that they would cut it by 14%. Um, so uh, that what that works out to for our school is about seventeen thousand dollars. So uh, in in the month of months of May and June, we will receive fourteen percent less funding for our basic instructional grant. Um, and yeah, that comes to about seventeen thousand um, dollars. The government has suggested that. Um, uh, 
people should be laid off that aren't, you know, really needed now that students aren't here, bus drivers, EAs, um, people who uh, are in various non-teaching capacities. Um, that might be like if, if a school board has a psychologist, if they have speech pathologists, those type of non-teaching positions that they feel just aren't needed now that students aren't in the class. The idea is lay them off, and that will help alleviate some, some of this cost. Well, we don't have bus drivers. We don't have psychologists uh, or, or speech pathologists. Uh, we, we do have EAs. We have three wonderful EAs uh, who are a very important part of our team uh, here at SML. And, and unfortunately, because of these government cuts, uh, we have no choice but but to uh, lay them off for the months of May and June. And uh, we're, we're very sorry for that, but we just, we have no choice. Uh, we, we need to do that. Even with these layoffs, uh, we'll, we'll only recover less than half of, of those cuts that we have. Uh, so it, it still affects our bottom line here at the school, even with these, these layoffs. Um, uh, we, we ask you to keep these ladies in your prayers uh, during this time, and and uh, we really look forward to the fall when full funding is is restored, and uh, and things get back to normal, and our, our team is is back together again. All right. Well, I, I think that's everything I have to uh, to offer you. Uh, if you have any questions, if there's things I missed, you have any questions about the school, uh, please please feel free to. Uh, contact me and, and let me know. Um, I'm more than, than willing to answer any questions you have. And it's important that we continue to keep the school, uh, uh, the congregation informed about things that are going on at the school. Um, just because I can't be there on a Sunday morning making announcements doesn't mean that we can't talk. And if you have questions, feel free uh, to e email me, dressler at smlacademy.ca, or, or give me a call here at the school, and, and we'll do what we can to answer your questions. Thanks for listening. God bless you as we go through this time. Uh, stay safe and uh, and continue to be in God's word and and uh, call upon him in prayer. God bless your day.